the Stade Louis de, home of the AS Monaco football and basketball teams, as well as playing host to World Athletics meets. In fact, it's the formidable running track that's utilised throughout the winter months by the resident tennis players of the Principality for their off-season training. Three such players were in action on day three of the Monte Carlo Rolex Masters as they all looked for a safe passage through to the last 16 of this year's competition. Novak Djokovic resides in the Principality, but the defending champion was not being made to feel at home by Czech youngster Yuri Vesely. The world number 55 was looking the more likely to make the crucial breakthrough in set one. Got it. He's outmaneuvered Djokovic. After Djokovic took the second set as a canter, it looked to be business as usual, but Vesely continued to antagonise the world number one, a break-up early in the decider. He anticipated well there. If Djokovic was to stay in this tournament, he'd have to do it the hard way, saving match point on his own serve. Just... But remarkably, the 22-year-old kept the coolest of heads at crunch time, pulling out one of the shots of the tournament. Oh, come on! How was that? And the Czech number two went on to seal undoubtedly the biggest win of his young career. Victory for Yuri Vesely over the defending champion and the current world number one. When I saw that Novak wasn't in his perfect form, then, you know, I just tried to push it and I was just saying all the time to myself, you know, focus on each ball point by point and we will see and, you know, I think in the end I was very focused and I think I coped with the emotions very well today. For me it was just very few things that I could take out from today's match as a positive, you know, I was uh, playing really, really bad and, uh, but, you know, nothing taking away from my opponent's uh, performance, you know, he, uh, he deserved to win. Last year's beaten finalist and Monaco resident Thomas Burdick was first up on Court de Prance against world number 99 Damir Juma. The Bosnian had beaten Rafael Nadal in Miami already this season and with a break in the opener here, was looking good to cause another shock. Burdick regrouped in the second to restore parity in the match after a one-sided tie-break. And yeah, that'll do very nicely. But a breakdown again in the decider, and after squandering a golden opportunity to break back, Burdick was on the brink of elimination. Before long, the Bosnian number one had wrapped up the shock. 2016 is becoming quite some season for Damir Juma. One Monte Carlo resident who did record a win in the second round was Milos Raonic, although the Canadian did require a third set tiebreak to eventually make it past marathon man Pablo Cuevas. Eight-time champion Rafael Nadal would open his 2016 account in Monaco against British number two Aliash Badene. Nadal let one of two breaks slip when serving for the match, but was keen to push Badene all the way when the Brit was serving for survival. Moments later, this routine win was settled for the Spanish number one. The fifth seed threw to the last 16 with little fuss. Nadal safely threw in two. 2014 champion Stan Wawrinka took to court Renier Trois with arguably the toughest of the opening matches for the top eight seeds. He took on German number one Philipp Kohlschreiber and after taking the opener on a tie-break, looked on course for a routine win. After losing his break advantage, Vavrinka rallied to break again before the need for a tie-break and went on to serve out the match. It's a good start to his campaign here in Monte Carlo and there's no doubt about it. There was good news for one seeded French player as Gael Monfils breezed past Paolo Lorenzi, but not for another as Richard Gasquet was sent packing by compatriot Lucas Puy. So, with the seemingly unbeatable world number one exiting the tournament, the draw is now wide open. The remaining 16 players all take to court on third round Thursday.